What is going on guys? And this season I've really enjoyed watching the Boston Celtics offense. They are 17 and 7 right now with the 5th ranked offense in terms of efficiency. And in this video, I just want to go over a few of their concepts, particularly in the pick and roll, that they execute quite well. Well, let's get to it. So to begin, it's important to understand what their ball screen philosophy is, and it all stems from the idea that they want to gain an advantage for the ball handler before he gets the screen from the center. So here they'll run a double drag play, where Tatum is the first screener and Tice is the second screener, and Tatum will look to set a real screen and try to gain that advantage for Kemba. And here, he sets a good screen and Justice Winslow trails Kemba. Once this happens, notice how Tice is rolling right to the basket. This is what they want, this is their philosophy. He doesn't set an actual screen on Winslow because now rolling early allows him to get out ahead of Kemba and it makes the job of Myers Leonard much tougher to contain both the ball and the roll and here Tice gets a layup. Here's the exact same play. We see Kemba has it, Tatum will set the first screen in the double drag and Tice will roll quickly after that not setting a screen and here Kemba gets to the rim. Now notably, the advantage the ball handler gains from that first screen doesn't have to be very significant. So here Jalen Brown whiffs on his screen, but notice how the threat of the screen is enough for Kemba to get a slight edge on Del Vadova. Once Tice sees this, he's gone. He's rolling right to the basket, looking to get behind the defense. And the best way to really illustrate how valuable this quick roll can be is to show you a play where the Celtics didn't execute well. So here Tatum off of that first screen gets a pretty clear advantage over Hernan Gomez. So what should Robert Williams do? He should already be rolling right to the basket. But instead, notice how he sets an actual screen when it wasn't needed. Now it's Tatum who gets out in front of Williams and this has a large chain effect. Plumlee can focus more of his attention on the ball, the weak side defenders can stay home on the shooters, all because Williams is out at the three point line and Tatum is forced to settle. Now let's briefly talk about some of their favorite actions and sets that they like to use to try to achieve this advantage. And one of their favorites is the double drag which we've talked about. So here Kemba comes off the screen, Tice slips and rolls early, and this draws in the attention of that weak side defender, and Kemba finds Brown for the open three. Here's a play in early offense where Marcus Smart will reverse it to Kanner, then he'll come and get the handoff back, and then he'll pitch it to Kemba. So it's pretty much the same setup right here as the double drag, they just got into the play differently. Here they'll get into the action more on the sideline, so they'll get it to Tatum and he'll hand it off to Kemba, and then notice how he sets a slight rub screen for Kemba, and this does enough to gain Kemba a slight advantage, and then once Ty sees that, he rolls right to the rim, and here he gets it on the roll. For this next set, let's first watch it all the way through and appreciate the execution. So the main thing to notice here with this set is that it is the same setup. Tatum will be the first screener, Tice will come in behind him. But the difference is before they typically had one player in each corner. That is the traditional spacing. But here notice how they put two guys in the strong side corner. So they're overloading the strong side. This has an effect of clearing out the weak side. So now when Tice rolls hard to the basket, the only player in position to help on the weak side is Jimmy Butler. But Butler was just involved in the action. He has his back turned and he's not ready to help. So that weak side tag that defense is utilized doesn't happen here. And that's how the Celtics got a dunk against a good defense. Now it has to be noted that Kemba really is the engine of their pick and roll attack and most of the plays we've seen. Because the thing is, if the opposing big man in the pick and roll is in a deep drop, then Tice will know to set an actual screen and Kemba can come off of that screen and hit a three. He's such a good off the dribble three point shooter that you have to respect this shot. So on this play, we see that Tice is able to roll out ahead of Holmes, and this is very beneficial. And the reason he's able to do this is because Holmes has to come out high to defend Kemba. And that's what allows for the pass to Tice here. And most teams don't have the luxury of having a guy like Kemba to draw the opposing big man out. So here, for instance, the Bulls run a pick and roll, and I actually like the start of this. Daniel Gafford rolls out ahead of the pick and roll, just like Tice would, but we see that Biombo is in a deep drop, taking that pass away. 
and this is because he doesn't have to come out as high to guard Chris Dunn as he would Kemba. And manipulating this deep drop can be tricky, and here Dunn shoots a floater. The other factor that makes Kemba so good is just that he's so quick and shifty. So here they get into their double high ball screen, and Ojale will slip this screen, and it's not a very good slip. It doesn't gain Kemba any kind of advantage as he's about to go into his screen with the center. But notice what he does. A simple between the legs crossover gets Garland out of position and gets Kemba that advantage. So now, Poirier doesn't have to set that screen, he can roll right to the basket. Thompson is not in a deep drop because Kemba can shoot so well, and that's what allows this alley-oop to happen. Moving on, and next I want to talk about a concept that they use called the interior seal. And we'll start off by showing you an example of how they use it to attack a drop coverage, which as I mentioned can be tough to manipulate. So here Tatum has it in his left hand, and we see that Jokic is in a drop. So notice what Tatum does. He puts his man in jail, slowing down, allowing Tice to roll ahead of him. Then Tice will seal off Jokic, allowing Tatum to go back to his right hand, and he gets a great shot at the basket. They use this concept all the time to attack drop coverage, and we see it again here. Tatum comes off of the screen, keeps Jimmy Butler on his back, putting him in jail. Tice rolls ahead of him to seal off Leonard, and it's a layup. And if we look back to this Bulls play, we see that they could have executed this too. Dunn actually does put his man in jail, slowing down, allowing Gafford to get ahead of the defense. So if Gafford had screened and sealed off Biombo, that may have freed up a layup for Dunn. The other time they'll use the interior seal during the pick and roll is on a reversal. So here Kemba and Tice run the pick and roll, and we see that Bogdanovich is in the lane looking to tag the roll man. And so on the skip over to Brown, he'll either have a chance to shoot it, or he can attack the closeout. And that's what he does here. He gets it, and he rips toward the baseline. And when this happens, what the Celtics love to do is have the roll man, so here Tice, seal off the defensive big man to create a lane for Brown. And here it works perfectly as Brown gets a layup. Here you can see it with no stoppages. This time Harrison Barnes comes with an aggressive tag so Tatum knows he can catch it and rip away toward the baseline and I love how Tice is already sealing Holmes before Tatum takes a dribble. And this seal is really necessary because if Tice just stood there and didn't seal Holmes then Tice would simply be in the way as Tatum drove right at him but instead Tice seals and Holmes actually tackles Tice so the foul is on the floor here. This works best when the pick and roll big man comes out high to contain the ball, which is what Holmes does here. So now when the ball is reversed, Holmes is vulnerable. He's out of position, allowing Tice to seal him off. And this is an example of a poor job by the Celtics. So it's pretty much the same situation. Smart catches it on the reversal, and we see that Tice is already looking to seal Holmes off. So if Smart quickly rips toward the baseline, he may have a layup, but instead he decides to drive back toward the middle, which isn't a great idea for a few reasons. One, he's driving back toward the pass, and Bogdanovich, one pass away, could get a strip steal here. Also, he's making life much easier on Holmes. Instead of having to tackle Tice, now Holmes is in perfect position to help if he needs to, and here he doesn't need to. Well, there you have it guys, and if you're looking to increase your basketball IQ as a player or a coach, go to smarterbasketballplayer.com to learn about my online program. We're having a very special holiday sale going on right now. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about basketball concepts and about the Celtics. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.